Hello, I'm Brad Fetters, and this is the 2020 Groves Winter Edition of Beyond the Box Score. We have met with the captains and coaches of your favorite teams to look back on last year and hear their thoughts on the current season. We start off the show with the boys' swim team. Last year saw the Falcons finish second at the state meet, a terrific way to cap off the year. Steady progression for head coach Ricky Forrest and the rest of the Groves swim team as I'm setting their sights on the ultimate prize, a state championship. Last year, I thought everything ended well. Um, initially, we had our sights on hopefully winning the state championship. When we got there, though, Dexter gave us a, a great meet, and uh, sadly, they walked away with first place. Even our guys um, who don't usually make the state meet, who are very um, efficient at league meet, stepped up in that position and helped to contribute to the mentality, um, and that's what overall kind of helped us to that second place. We finished pretty well at the league meet. Um, we got a lot of best times, and so as a team, we um, I think we did pretty well in our goal. League meet, you know, we came in third last year. We were only 10, 15 points out of second there and probably about 25 out of first. We really wanted to win the States. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't, but I think we put in a lot of hard work for it. Uh, we just couldn't come up with it. Every single year, we've kind of been moving up in places. My freshman year, we got fourth at States. My sophomore year, we got third. Last year, we got second. So this year, we're hoping to you know, round off the whole thing and bring home a first place title. We're also trying to uh, drop a, a good amount of time as a team. Um, I mean, because not everyone can make states, so we're trying to find a goal that we can all kind of work to as a team instead of just a couple kids. We want to make sure that they're doing the small things correctly, and hopefully that transfers into something when championship mode comes in. Coach Forrest brings a really unique aspect to the team where he can bring in uh, drills and techniques that he learned at college um, into our program, which is something you really don't get a lot in high school swimming. Um, so I think that's kind of what separates us from a lot of other teams. I love his young uh, perspective. It's it's very good. He swam at Michigan State. He knows the program well. He was assistant coach under uh, Dave Eichenhorn, so he's been around the program a long time. Uh, my freshman year was his first year head coaching, um, and I, I've, I've definitely seen growth from that point forward. Coach Ricky's great. I've been swimming with Ricky for a long time at summer clubs and stuff. Um, I think he really kind of just brings everybody together on the team. Um, we have fun here, but... When it's time to get serious and stuff, everybody gets down to business. And I think he really believes in us. I think that's a huge thing. If you can buy into what the swimmers are saying, I think that uh, it goes a long way with us. Really happy with the seniors uh, that the team voted in this year uh, for captains. I'll start with uh, Nolan Camus. Uh, you know, he's a leader in and out of the pool. He's one of the class presidents here at Groves High School. Uh, you know, he was a great breaststroker and IMer. Got his IM cut for the first time last year. Nick Johns is somebody I've known since uh, my days at Berkshire when I taught him in seventh grade. And, you know, he always, you know, he's the type of kid that'll shake my hand after after every practice and just be like, thanks for, thanks for coaching today. And, you know, he knows what it takes to make it to the big level. Uh, A.J. Zako, uh, he's been a grinder uh, since he came out of the team his freshman year. Uh, you know, he scored for us his sophomore year and his junior year he was top eight in the 200 freestyle and top eight in the 100 butterfly. And then our last senior captain this year is Jackson uh, Gugney. And, you know, he was actually a captain voted last year, which speaks to what these kids think of what he is as a leader. And, you know, He's been on some state championship relays the past two years, and the medley relays got our school record in the medley. Uh, we have a quad meet against Dexter, who's the um, returning state champ, so we're, we're geared up for that. Um, we always have our county meet um, towards the end of the season. That um, That's when kind of all of our times start to break out, and we start to um, produce times that will that will help us um, later on in the season. See home meet for sure. That's always a good one. Just the rivalry between the two schools. We got friends uh, between the two schools. And uh, it's always close races between. It should be a very good meet this year. Either team could come out on top. The Battle Creek meet is always a fun meet. Um, we head up to Battle Creek and um, it's a big meet. There's a lot of teams there and stuff. There's a lot of good competition. And then after the meet, a lot of the people on the team go out to dinner and stuff. So it's kind of just fun to end the weekend on a fun note. See home, obviously. Uh, that's a huge, huge meet. Uh, we love swimming against them. We're not going to be safe or anything, but uh, we love just kind of uh, swimming against them. Uh, as well as Bloomfield Hills, that's our last uh, home meet, and for the seniors, it'll be senior night. So uh, we're hoping to fill up the sands a little bit, uh, kind of enjoy each other's presence for the last time, and uh, 
hopefully some fast. Hopefully the sea home meet. They uh, they beat us last year in the dual meet and at league meet. And, uh, you know, it was kind of nice that we got a little revenge on them at the end of the year at state meet. That's what makes this rivalry so great. To be a Groves Falcon, uh, it means a lot. Uh, you walk into school every day with everything. You walk by the pool and everything kind of just like relating to Groves High School and stuff, Falcons all over the wall, and you kind of just have a sense of pride in your high school. A huge responsibility to kind of help the other guys out on the team and be a leader. Um, it's one I definitely think I'm ready for and to take on. I'm excited to take it on and I'm looking forward to this season. Really cool to follow in that like really cool tradition of kind of you go up through the program and you give back to the program. You look at the tradition here, you got you know all Americans from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and, and beyond, you know, there is just in a tradition of excellence here. I was going to be actually a Brother Rice Warrior, and uh, I made the right decision by far. Uh, you know, a lot of people choose to be here. Uh, there's some kids from all over the place, and I think that once you get here, you really get a sense of family. Uh, we all care about each other very much. Uh, I mean, we spend more time with this team than we do our parents during these four months, and uh, it really shows. I mean, uh, you come into the program not really knowing a lot of the kids, even as freshmen, and by the end, you're, you know, really, really sad to go. The Grove swim team is absolutely loaded this season as they welcome back a terrific mix of veteran leadership. Nolan Camus and Jackson Gugney are both returning seniors that were part of a state championship relay team a year ago. Graham Hupp, AJ and Jackson Zako, as well as Nick Johns all contributed at last year's state meet. The team has plenty of important dates still remaining on their schedule, including counties, leagues, the rivalry meet with Seaholm, and the state finals, which will take place this year at the Holland Aquatic Center. We wish the Falcons good luck this season and look forward to them bringing home some hardware. We now turn our attention on the wrestling team at Groves. Last year saw the team fall short at districts, falling to the rivals from Seaholm. An outstanding group is back for Coach Jones this year, ready to make some noise on the map. Last year, I wasn't really expecting to do as well as I did. I really stepped into this kind of leader role. We had a lot of guys getting injured, and I really helped step up going at 160. And uh, I'm really glad how far I went, went to regionals, almost made, and almost made states. I thought I was finally starting to like pick up the sport. Um, I know I'd been struggling freshman and sophomore year, and then um, I messed up my knee. So that was uh, kind of bad. You know, it took me out of districts so on competing for that. So um, I'm just looking forward to the season. I thought we, the whole team did good. I feel like we should have uh, beat Seahome for like the district championships. I feel like we we should have basically got the dub because we all we worked hard that week. Last season was a building year again for us. We uh, we was down last year. I knew it was gonna be down. So last year was a year like a give me year. We're gonna uh, prepare for the next year. You know, I graduated a lot the year before and I knew it was going to be a down season. So it was more of not worried about winning, but about building the program back up. You know, wrestling is a sport that you go, it's ups and downs, lots of ups and downs. In high school, especially in high school, you don't know what you have from year to year. So you're always building. Um, I think we can do some good things this year. Um, looking to take um, districts, especially team districts. Um, I know we've lost to Southfield and Seahome the past um, couple of years, but I think we got a real good shot this year. And I think um, the guys are really starting to get buy into the program. Over the summer, Coach Jones acquired a lot of new coaches. They're great, crazy amount of energy. They've been pushing us really hard. Just reminds us every day to keep pushing, keep going. And they really helped me get through, keep going. For the team, I want to win like the district championship and go on the regionals. And this year, I want to individually win states. The expectation this year is high. Uh, we had a great off season. We had a, a lot of camps. Did some, we did some uh, individual dual tournaments in the summertime. You know, the kids were focused. We were averaging 15 to 20 kids at open wrestling through the summer. So I'm, I, uh, I have a lot of high expectations for the kids. They put a lot of time, a lot of effort in work to, to get better this year. Sam Graves was just a hard worker. He's a workhorse. He's a blue collar wrestler. You know, he last year he had an amazing year. He ended up the season making to the regional, almost making to the state finals. He beat a kid from Brother Rice he hadn't beaten before. He beat him in a blood round to make it to the regionals, and he got the regionals almost made it through there too. Marcus is another workhorse. You know, he's he got injured last year, had a knee injury, and uh, I kind of pushed him, pulled him out a little bit for we saved my new year. Senior year, try not to hurt him because you got senior year, so let's take it easy. Junior year, he got better, did a lot of off season work. He's gotten much better. I expect him to do a lot.
And of course, you got Damon Dunbar, who, if he does everything he's supposed to, I think he can win that state title. He's a he's he's coming off a really really good year. He placed fourth last year down at the state finals. Um, he's I think he's ranked number two this year at 152. But the kid is ranked above him. He's beaten. He has 156 wins, about eight losses in the career, which is I think is amazing for for a high school wrestler. Uh, he's just a, he's an all around smart wrestler. You will never see another kid that will scout his opponent. He scouts his opponent. He comes off his mat and goes watch his next opponent. He's very smart in wrestling. Coach Jones always has preached, you know, to be the most physical um, program around here, especially. I remember he told me back in sixth grade that I have to deal with him for another seven years or whatever, and I was like, oh, boy, who's this crazy joker? <laughs> so, so, you know, um, but wrestling under him has really been an experience that also has helped me, um, especially with a lot of perseverance. Amazing amounts of energy he gives us, even though, like, he's sometimes off on the side. He's just always encouraging us to keep motivating us. Well, to see home meet, uh, mostly just because, you know, it's the sea home meet, you know, the rivalry, cross town rivalry. So, you know, that's obviously one that we always look forward to. Sea home, because uh, this year in football, they uh, kicked us out in districts. We had 13 year streak against them, being them. And uh, they finally got us, and I want revenge. Really bad. Oakland County, because every year I've never won. I mean, I've lost every year, but like, I always lose to the person that wins it. Like in the semifinals, and I end up placing third. I always look forward to Oakland County. Oakland County just amazing coaching, fun time because you get to see a lot of great coaches, a lot of good wrestlings. And this year, CC is bringing the A team back there this year, so it should be really competitive. This program specifically has um, meant a lot because I see how the people that come out of it are better people as they come out of it. Doesn't matter if they were, you know, the worst wrestler you've ever seen or, you know, the best wrestler you've ever seen. They always come out better people in some way, in some form, if they've chosen to stick through it, you know, for the entire tenure. So um, I just think I'm, I'm very proud. It's a huge honor, honestly. Uh, I can't imagine going anywhere else. I'm really glad of all the sports decided to do. And I'm, they really formed me to be the person I am today. Like, I like being part of, like, a family, little family thing. And I feel like for the past four years, Girls Focus has made it like a family, like a baby mini family. Came here in 1997, uh, became the head coach in uh, 2002, and I have a great athletic director who believes in me. I have a great booster club that um, give me everything I want. Kids constantly comes out. We, you know, we stay com we stay competitive, we stay positive. You know, we don't, we're not a big powerhouse wrestling team, but my goal here is to build young men. You know, wrestling, you're not going to make a lot of money out of it. You know, it's, it's like Roger Kish said years ago, he said he, he gets his glory from wrestling. And I get my glory from getting these kids to the next level in their in they life. The Falcons have state qualifier Damon Dunbar back in their lineup. Dunbar is a top five wrestler in the state of Michigan and already holds the school record for victories. The other big names to pay attention to this season include Sam Grazel and Marcus Cunningham, who continues to work back from a knee injury. Groves will once again host districts this year as they look to knock off their rivals from Seaholm. Bloomfield Hills and Brother Rice make up the rest of that bracket. If you want to see the wrestling team in action, you can view their recent meet against Seaholm. That matchup, as well as the rest of our BACB sporting events, can be watched on demand at bloomfieldcommunitytelevision.org as well as the Birmingham Cable Board website. Next up on our program is the Birmingham Unified Hockey Team, which consists of members from both Birmingham Public High Schools. Last year, the Kings had an outstanding season under first-year head coach Mike Bobek. The team racked up 17 wins to go along with just six losses. They also captured the OAA White Championship. The Kings picked up a playoff victory over Royal Oak before falling to eventual state champion Catholic Central. The team lost their leading goal scorer Andrew Beggs to graduation, but hopes they have what it takes to compete in the ultra-competitive OAA Red. Last year was very successful. I would say maybe the most successful BU season we've had so far, like ever. Um, we had a lot of depth. Uh, seniors were um, outstanding, especially, you know, guys like a Andrew Beggs, you know, putting up like 50 goal, uh, 50 point seasons. That really helped our team out and uh, everything the seniors did just made us a really, uh, really effective team. Uh, last year we came in with a new coach and it was uh, going to be interesting, but I think we did pretty well. Took a little bit to get used to it, but he's a great coach. My overall thoughts of last season, uh, we did pretty well. You know, we lost... Uh, 
regional championship to Catholic Central, but you know they went on to win the state championship. They're a very good team, but overall I think we had a really good year. We lost a lot of seniors, but um, this year's team's looking pretty well, and I think just last year we can build off of and carry it into this year. Well, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about high school hockey in general, how the guys play, what to expect, what not to expect from them, and uh, going into this season was a heck of a lot more prepared. Uh, obviously from the AAA level to high school, uh, learning the community a little bit more about what the guys are like here. And so this year, I had them for the full season, obviously. Then I had them all spring, got to watch them through the summer, and I knew what I was doing when I got here into, you know, going into this season. So it was, uh, I was always better prepared. My expectations for this year's team, you know, we want to win the OAA. That's our goal. Um, we want to get past, you know, what we did last year in playoffs. You know, we have to play Catholic Central again, but... You know, you never know on any given night we could beat any given team. And, you know, we're trying to get as far as we can the state playoffs. You know, every team's goal is state title. So that's ultimately what we're looking for. But OA is a big goal of ours. This year we're just trying to bring more intensity, more physicality. Just uh, everything. Everything seems to be better. We're going to have some pretty uh, big expectations of this team going pretty far in states and uh, winning the divisional uh, games. So that should be fun. Playing a, a really tough schedule. So I... I'm trying to be optimistic about it, but we've got a good, solid, fast team that's going to come at guys every night, and they're going to get challenged. So my expectations right now is that I want them to compete, compete at a high level. And what Coach Boback brings to this team is a lot of experience. You know, he played hockey for a lot of years. He played college at Providence. You know, he played in the NHL. He played all over the place. He brings a lot of good experience, a lot of good teaching to this team. I think everything that he does, like his everything from his fundamentals to his system is just really well throughout his like he learned all this from throughout his years of experience playing in the nhl college high school u.s national team wherever he's played he brings a lot of energy he knows systems very well so we've got great four check going great penalty kill great power play those are all things that he can bring to the table as a coach and he's very good at scouting too i think the hockey knowledge is outstanding uh he clearly knows what he's doing uh he played at a professional level uh he knows what it takes to get there he knows what it takes to push us to the next level and um, I'm, really, uh, I'm really happy to have him as a coach. Jack Bessett wears the C. He's, he's a really good, aggressive hockey player. Uh, he's a great leader on and off the ice for the guys. Um, Sean Piotrowicz, our goalie, another great leader on and off the ice. He's had a heck of a start. He's played two really good, solid games for us. As you can see out here, we've got three goaltenders. So he's uh, kind of taken over the lead, so to speak, for the goaltending. And then um, Dayden Carr, great speed great person on and off the ice as well so we look for the qualities the senior leadership a lot of times here with this and uh, you know more or less going forward here the big thing for us is just to have that consistency and hopefully they can drive that consistency night in and night out I'm most looking forward to playing in the Catholic Central game because they took us out last year and I really want to get revenge on them so and that's always going to be a good game we're going to get Clarkston we're going to get Rochester uh, all of the games you know, coming up, we're looking forward to playing. Uh, there isn't a soft spot in our schedule. All really good teams. But uh, the Cranbrook game was a ton of fun for the kids. They got to go across town here and uh, really nice crowd, and I think it was a great environment for everybody. Most looking forward to, uh, I think, Clarkston. Uh, they beat us last year on a close game. Um, I'm just looking for that redemption. You know, I feel like every, everyone on this team uh, has what it takes to beat any team we come up against. Another big game we're looking forward to is probably Rochester. You know, they went to state semifinals. They were a very good team in the OAA last year. They won the OAA. They lost a lot of kids, but they're still going to be a rebound and be a really good team. Really looking forward to that game. Ever since I joined uh, sophomore year, you know, um, I've just felt a, amount of, a good amount of pride wearing this jersey, uh, especially with all the good players that came before me. And, um, you know, I'm super happy to be here. Well, it means a lot. It's a ton of fun being the director of hockey, the head coach of the varsity team. It's uh, you know just seeing all the different age groups and watching the kids develop through the years, and uh, you know seeing my second year in doing this and having this you know seeing the faces come back. It's uh, it's it's fun because you're, I'm a part of the community now. Coming here after school, it's just the place to be with the boys coming together from Groves and Sea Home. Just getting together, hanging out, playing some hockey, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, what it means to me to be a member of this BU team is just to be a part of this like brotherhood, this family. You know, we're all brothers here. This is a huge family. Um, it's just a great organization to be a part of. You know, this is probably one of the closest knit organizations I've ever been a part of. And um, it's just an honor to be a part of this brotherhood. It's been a blast. We've had so much fun My working with my assistant coaches, Nate Resnick, and then we have Anatoly. 
uh, Coach Anatoly, who everybody around here knows, our, our Russian skating coach. Uh, and then Jack Jackson, our, his first year here with us, he's played North American Hockey League. So we're we're just having a really good time trying to give as much knowledge back to these guys as we can about our experiences with the game and uh, teaching the life lessons of what comes on after they go on and move on from this game. Birmingham Unified hasn't seen much of a drop-off after moving up from the OAA white to the red. At the nearly halfway point of the season, the Kings are currently in second place behind only Lake Orion in the standings. Junior Brendan Lamb leads all scorers with 10 points through 11 games, including five goals. Senior Aiden Carr is right behind him with three goals and three assists. Birmingham will look to add some offense in the second half as they're averaging just over two goals per game. Games against Clarkston, Rochester, and Stony Creek remain for the Kings, who will look to end the regular season strong. Now is a good time to remind our viewers that you can keep track of our program on social media. Please give us a like on Facebook as well as a follow on Twitter at Beyond Box Score. We post links to all of our sporting events there as well. We leave the ice and hit the hardwood with the girls' basketball team. The Falcons hit an up-and-down season last year, winning just eight games and dropping 14 in defeat. They were able to pick up a first-round playoff victory over Seaholm before falling short to Royal Oak. Groves will once again play out of the OAA Red, and their head coach, Jessica Weasler, knows the difficult strength of schedule will test her Falcons throughout the season. Last year, uh, we were very young. We had graduated nine the year before, and we moved out to the Red, um, so we hit much greater competition with a much younger team. Last year, I mean, I thought it was pretty good. Like overall as a team, we did really well. We just, in playoffs, it was sort of tricky because we did really well against the home and then we didn't do so well. Last season we were pretty successful, um, obviously with a lot of young kids and a big turnaround. We only had two seniors and um, we did pretty well. Only lost or only won a couple games, so we want to turn around the season to have more successes. Well, last season we had a lot of girls that came from JV, so we were kind of just like trying to get used to the transition in varsity. So last year we kind of struggled a little bit moving up a division. We had a lot of young players, so it was kind of hard of us getting in a groove and everything from all of us coming up to JV, having only about four returners. Since last year it's not the same case this year, so we're coming back with a much more experienced team and. Uh, we're really looking forward to seeing what they can do. I think we can build a lot quicker since we're not starting from um, starting from as young as we were. We're focusing a lot on defense this year. We did last year too, but we're like changing it up a lot this year, and we're focusing more on the speed of it. With more experience on our team, I think we have the possibility of actually making a run in our division and. Um, taking down some big name teams and schools. My expectations for this year is really getting into the groove of everything. Everyone's comfortable with the, each other now, and we're just starting to know each other. We have a lot of new talent coming up now. Our team voted to have our four seniors be our captains, um, so they're all seniors. Um, Ellie Rubrik has been with us, or has been with the program for four years, been with the varsity team for four years, as has Mia Yarberry, so they bring a lot of experience. Um, and then Deja Green and Brianni Johnson have been with the varsity team for three years, so everybody's been with the varsity team for a long time. Um, they bring a great mixture of leadership for us, uh, some of them a lot more vocal than others, some of them more lead by example. Um, they know what they're doing on the court. I think the girls really respect them, and I'm excited to see all four of them work together. So Coach Weasler, she really encouraged us to do more, push faster. She always encouraged us to keep going and never to stop. Coach, she's a really good coach. She uh, focused on our weaknesses and our strengths, trying to work on us individually or just coming together as a team. She puts in good offenses for us that really focus on our key players. And the team as a whole, she's definitely made us, like, we are a pretty quiet team. She kind of is making us communicate a lot better and perform as a unit as opposed to individual players. The girls, of course, always look forward to the Sea home game. Um, they... They, you know, I mean, it's the rivalry. It's what they what they look forward to most, and so we'll be hitting them in January. So we'll be looking forward to that a lot. And then, other than that, this year in the red is going to be really competitive. I think we're going to have a good game every single game. I'm really looking forward to playing Seahome and Clarkston because I know a lot of the girls on both of the teams. 
and I know like what they have to bring, and I know we can give them a good game. The two games that I'm probably most excited about is, of course, to see home game because of our rival, and probably our first game is North Farmington. I feel like we have some kind of battle there. We were really close last year, but I think we can pull it through this year. I'm looking forward to the North Farmington game. Last game, it was kind of a hype game. We won, and I think six, four points over. So it's kind of like, we were kind of like the same team. So we're just, you know, ready for it. To be a Groves Falcon, it's pretty awesome. But to me, it means that I am like always positive and I'm always like bringing something to the table for my team. Being a Groves Falcon means to me that we get to support our school and have good camaraderie around the school and student athletes in general. To be strong, independent, to show uh, courage, you know, getting back on that court and just showing that you're working hard, playing hard, and all about the team, teamwork, supportive, and just hyping up the team. For me to, to be a Gross Falcon is to always persevere, push through, and never stop. Even if we're down, we always come back up no matter what, even if we lose. Um, it's really, really special. The kids here are very special. The girls that, I, that I've come into contact with are, are great. Um, and it's exciting now to be building something that's ours, you know, to see the fruits of our labor kind of come to fruition and and to watch the girls learn what we're doing and um, get used to the philo our philosophy and, and moving forward. So it's been great being around. Finally, it doesn't feel like I'm just getting my feet wet anymore. Groves has gotten off to a 3-4 and four start to the season, and more importantly, they have a 2-1 and one record in league play. West Bloomfield and Southfield a and appear to be the top competition within the league. The Falcons will only face off with their rival Seaholm once in the regular season, and that game will air in its entirety online at BirminghamAreaCableBoard.org. However, the two teams could face off once again in the district playoffs. That tournament will take place at Bloomfield Hills Marion, with Marion, Berkeley, Royal Oak, Southfield, and our two Birmingham schools making up the rest of the bracket. We wrap up today's show with the boys' basketball team at Groves. Hall of Fame head coach Benny White is back for year two after a 12-9 record last season and a first-round playoff exit to Brother Rice. The Falcons will welcome back the majority of their scoring from last season, including talented junior Daniel Lee. Grove should be in the mix for a league championship as it once again competes out of the OA White. I learned a lot this first year, not just about basketball, but about Groves and the culture here and how to adjust to it and adapt to it uh, and not bend too much. But I think overall this, in this last year we've learned to ha find a happy medium with what's expected and what's demanded from them in order to be a good basketball team. So. It's that wanted to win, but it was also people that didn't care about playing. So this year, we came, made sure we got all guys that's fully committed, that wants to play, that wants to win a championship, and we're just going to do it better than last year. Last year, our team was mainly seniors, so like I had to play a role, like coming off the bench a lot, and then I played, started some games, but I had to play a role. Now this year, since it's only three seniors, four seniors, I have a big role this year, starting point guard, helping out the team, be a leader. Our overall thoughts from last year, well, at first we wasn't as a skilled team. We had, it was kind of gritty, you know, we were scrappy, getting rebounds, you know, pushing up the court. And, you know, our set last year was kind of close, but we made things work out. Last year, I feel like we were, we worked hard, but I feel like also that we, we didn't accomplish as much as I think we should have. So this, this year, I feel like we were working towards that. I got high hopes for them because they, they bought in. They uh, understand what, what's expected from me, but more especially what they got to give this game if they want to be the best player. We worked all hard summer and fall, so I feel like we can get far in districts and hopefully get past there. Tough, be tough, coachable, and uh, be willing to share the ball. We're a small team this year, so we can't really, like, score from half court as much because, you know, most teams get, like, six, seven giants, six, eight giants from down the court. So we got to push the ball up as fast as we can to get easy buckets. Just to get after it, get after every night, um, rebound fast, get get down the floor, and uh, work as a team and talk to each other and support each other on the court. We got two seniors in that group with Adolphus Cass and Devin White. Uh, again, I just mentioned how they're much better versions of themselves as players, and but also I think as as young men. You know, Mark Watson uh, Jr. and uh, Daniel Lee are juniors who also were on the team last year, and and, and 
I, if I had to give out a most improved player this time, it would probably be Mark Watson Jr. Uh, he works hard. He's consistent. Uh, he never he never complains. Uh, he's always one of the one of the first ones here, last one gone. Daniel Lee is probably our most talented player. Just getting him to slow down and see the game opposed to what he wants to see, see what's actually there, and he's starting to understand that and get that. Uh, so I look forward to him having a good year too. Coach White, very good coach. Uh, knows a lot about the game. Uh, taught me a lot. Taught me to be a better player and a better person outside of basketball and basketball. He's a great person overall, a great man. Ta teach me how to become a better person and how to uh, be coachable. He's been really pushing us this year. He's um, He talks to us a lot about like what he sees in our team and like the goals that we need to accomplish this year that we didn't get a chance to get last year. So uh, I feel like he got us down the right path. Uh, definitely we Farmington and uh, Southfield a and So those are two uh, good games, good teams that we're going to have a hard time getting past, but got to come together, and I feel like we could beat them. Farmington we lost to last year by 20, and then a game-winner shot here, which I know a few people are there, so that's a rivalry. And then Southfield, it's always tough games, good um, environment. The game against Farmington, I feel like we were like close to winning, but – I feel like we just we just have some unfinished business to do with them. And Southfield A&T is always a fight. See home, it's, it's a, one of the biggest rivalries. Other than Farmington, it's one of our biggest rivalries. Like if we go over there at their house, it's like it's packed. It's like barely you can see stuff. And it's like like the biggest thing in this city of Birmingham. All of my our games that uh, you're gonna get a opportunity to get a experience from and rem and a memory from. Uh, I know See Home and Groves are. Our neighbor schools, and there's, the, there's that rivalry, I think a friendly rivalry between them when it comes to anything. I, I saw the water polo, football game, I mean, whatever it is, whatever sport it could be, it could be a debate uh, team that I think the rivalry would, would be there in terms of the, the competition. So I, I understand how it's a big game here for Groves, but uh, it's just, for me it's, it's another game. I don't have a, I don't have a, a love-hate or I really want to beat them because they're – no, I, I want to go in here and play the best that we can play. To be a gross talking, respectful, helping others out, looking out for others, and then putting pe other people before you. To be a gross falcon, it means to help this community out and help each other rise to greatness. Be respectful, always be willing to help others, and uh, to respect your peers. I think for me, um, to still be doing it, um, at this point in my life, uh, I f like I said, I feel blessed to be healthy enough to do it. Uh, inspired and, and, and willing, not just the willing part, but motivated. I look, I look forward to coming and practice every day uh, and being around young people. So for me, it's, it's nothing but a plus. The Falcons have a 4-2 and two record at the quarter mark of the season. League play will begin shortly with Southfield a and and Troy the main competition. The Falcons have already picked up an impressive 18-point victory over Seaholm this season. Adolphus Cast and Devin White will provide this year's team with plenty of senior leadership. The Falcons will play in a district over at Farmington along with Brother Rice, North Farmington, Southfield A&T, and Seaholm. That will do it for this episode of Beyond the Box Score. If you've missed any portion of it, you can check us out online at bloomfieldtwp.org or birminghamareacableboard.org. A big thank you goes out to the athletic department at Groves High School, including athletic director Tom Flynn. A thank you to the entire BACB Sports crew, including co-producer Jason Rodolski and director Steve Rota. I'm Brad Fetters. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time right here on Beyond the Box Score.